the bottom line in business. Voice America Business. Welcome to CIO Talk Radio with your host, Sunjo Gall. All comments, views, and opinions expressed on this show are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers. Here's Sunjo Gall. Good morning and uh, welcome to CIO Talk Radio. To learn more about the show, please visit www.ciotalkradio.com. Today's topic is Indian CIO, Surviving a Wild Ride of Ups and Downs. Our guests for today's show are Partha Iyengar, who is the Vice President and Distinguished Analyst and Regional Research Director for India at Gartner. Good morning and good evening, Partha. Good evening, Sanjay. How are you doing, sir? Fine, thank you. Very good. And we also have Arvind Tavare. Uh, he is the CIO for Mahindra and Mahindra Limited. Good evening, Arvind. Good evening, Sanjay. How are you doing? Well, very fine. Thanks. So how's the weather there? I'm in Chicago. We are covered in snow. We look all white here. How's the weather? We're just experiencing the cold here now. <laughs> so where are you cold located? Is from your cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, 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 the measure of cold is a little different. I mean, if you were to ever come to Chicago, it's like yeah. minus, what, 20, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so uh, anyways, this is a great topic. Uh, we are looking at India as one of the major players, and they are on the map more and more. And they started, the, the, the whole country saw a boom, and they saw a you know, kickstart in their consumer economy, which in turn kickstarted your um, enterprise IT, and there were big plans made. Now, with the global meltdown, there is a ripple effect and significant effect in most countries, including India. With that being said, this would have had some impact on the enterprise IT, and you would have to, you know, pull back on most of those grand-scale initiatives that you would have otherwise planned. So with this being a new experience of suddenly getting a boom and then suddenly getting seeing a bust, what is, what is what's happening with the IT leadership? How are they handling it? Have you had any such experience before? And if not, then how are you taking this surprise? Partha. Um, I'd say that this is probably the, the second uh, cycle that we've seen of this kind. The first time we had this boom in IT uh, spending in India by the enterprises, Indian enterprises, was back in the dot-com boom days, which really was the first strong wave of IT investments uh, by Indian enterprises. With the dot-com bust, uh, the, the roller coaster ride, as you, as you call it, uh, uh, kind of went completely uh, downhill, and we saw uh, almost an overnight uh, freeze on spending a lot of the ERP initiatives that had been kicked off in the, in the height of the dot-com boom, uh, euphoria were, were brought to a grinding halt. So I'd say the Indian enterprises have seen this before back in the 2001-2002 uh, time frame. Um, the second point I'd like to make about, about the downturn this time around is that uh, I think it is, it is somewhat different from the last downturn. I see, uh, and maybe Arvind can comment on this further, but I see that uh, CIOs and, and the business management is actually taking a more cautious approach in terms of, of dealing with the slowdown. I'm not seeing as much of a knee-jerk reaction of, oh, my God, the slowdown is here, let's cut everything and, and hunker down. There is a more focused look at, you know, which are the projects that are critical to, to uh, support continued growth when the turnaround happens which are the projects that are critical to competitiveness and innovation for the future. And enterprises are actually uh, being quite savvy in trying to protect those projects and continue those projects. Uh, the last point is uh, for the third year in a row, India has been the fastest growing IT market. Uh, and again, for the past couple of years, for the first time, on the back of increased domestic spending, not just the offshore IT wave, and there's been more of a slowdown, but I don't think the bottom has dropped out of uh, Indian IT investment. Arvind, what yeah. do you think? Yeah, I do agree with Partha uh, regarding the current uh, situation, the economic situation. Uh, the slowdown effect is there, yes, but I'm not, I don't think it is uh, so severe that uh, it needs uh, some sort of a radical thinking in 
cost cutting per se. I mean, there is a sort of a rationalized uh, uh, analysis and decision making in which projects to go and which projects to live for. Uh, but uh, uh, but I think Indian enterprises per se, the hardcore, uh, basically the, I would say the manufacturing industry per se, uh, they are not really as affected earlier uh, in that 2000.com bust uh, because I think that is more if sort of uh, people who ventured into those dot com companies uh, possibly they had more affected but as far as um, other Indian enterprises are concerned uh, I don't think I mean I'm seeing the uh, the growth in IT deployment for the last 10 years is consistently of course in the last five years it is quite steep. Now, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra has been a uh, mature enterprise, been around for a while. And um, I'm sure with the growth that you've seen, there must have been right uh, foundation would have been put in place. And that's why for you it is a, it's a regular thing inside that, um, you know, Mahindra and Mahindra enterprise. Now, if you look at the market as a whole, would you say that enterprise IT was anything more than a number of uh, network engineers trying to keep the computer systems up and running Till like what early 2000, and now suddenly you have to become most sophisticated. You should have a data center, and you should have, you know, uh, 99.999 up. Uh, you know, you, you should you should be 99.999 up at all times. So so with this sudden shift, people are are they able to even handle that level of expectation from from uh, IT, the enterprise IT folks that are coming on, on assuming those roles? Partha, what do you think? I think I'd probably characterize the evolution of IT in India slightly differently um, than, than what you've uh, described, Sanjog. Uh, I think we've gone through, I'd say over the last uh, 12 to 15 years, we've gone through an evolution of where IT was, was very, very uh, light in, in most enterprises where most of the process was still very manual intensive. Uh, and starting from that point about 15 years ago, we got to this point where IT kind of entered the back office in, in quite a few enterprises, but it was really just back-end reconciliation, some of the, the uh, you know, back office operations. So the typical kind of EDP uh, environment of the, of the past, and if, if that probably brings us to that, uh, you know, 2002 uh, time frame, uh, which is when we started seeing IT move into supporting some of the front office and some of the client-driven activities as well, uh, which is really, you know, the activity that, that companies have been investing in over the past five years. Uh, and where we are poised now uh, to, to really from 2008 and, and heading into the next couple of years is really uh, Indian enterprises um, uh, take – uh, move on to where IT is actually driving innovation and competitive edge within uh, within the, the business. Now that's an evolution that we've seen around the world. The difference in in India is that it's happened in a relatively compressed time frame, and the movement and the evolution is is still happening quite fast. If you look at kind of the global uh, uh, time scales we've seen in other parts of the world. So I'd say uh, that this evolution, you know, Gartner talks about type A, type B, type C enterprises. Type A enterprises are those that, are, that believe in IT being a, a keen competitive edge and a differentiator uh, and critical to their future effectiveness and competitiveness. Type B enterprises believe in being close to the leading edge but not necessarily on the bleeding edge. And type C enterprises are those that are, uh, you know, quite risk averse. They, they tend to invest in something only after it's, com after it's completely uh, uh, stable and mature. Uh, what we've seen in India over the past couple of years is the increase in the numbers of type A organizations that are investing more heavily in IT as, as really a competitive edge weapon uh, and, and uh, correspondingly also an increase in the type B uh, companies and where, you know, 10 years ago we would have, we would have said that India was predominantly a type C uh, kind of IT environment. We're seeing that mix change rapidly over the next, uh, you know, over the last year 
and it will continue to change, I believe, over the next couple of years. No, I, I think uh, uh, you made yeah, it's quite on well the primary well. and secondary uh, research that uh, you may have conducted and or other consulting that Gartner would have consulted in the Indian enterprise environment. So, uh, Arvind, now when you talk to, say, your, your counterparts in other companies who may yes. or may not be as mature as your, uh, like Mahindra and Mahindra organization, how are they adopting to change? Because part of what you mentioned is that the speed at which the change happened was very fast. Now, adoption is also a key. So, Arvind, question for you is, is the Indian enterprise able to adopt the change at that pace? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if, see, we, um, I should, the evolution of IT at m and if I may take that as an example, uh -huh. has really happened uh, when we went for uh, SAP after our BPR exercise in 1996. And um, it's not only since then, I, I mean, we are basically on SAP and uh, uh, and the Microsoft as a communication platform. I mean, if you see that, uh, the road we travel in the last 12 years is quite, uh, mm, I would say, uh, distinguished in a sense compared to many other organizations. But that's basically because of the environment which m and management has into. Uh, I would say if you ask me about the comparative organizations other than m and I would say more or less in the last five years to six years, that transformation has happened uh, in many of the Indian organizations, both large organizations definitely, but even the sudden medium organizations also. Uh, along with the IT department has also evolved. I mean, Pata talked about the EDP department, and which was so about 15 years back. But uh, even taking the examples of m and I mean, we had our IT department before, but after the SAP implementation, um, we separated out the IT part into a separate company. And the core IT function which remained with Mahindra is basically is handled through the business functional people. And over the years, I mean, it's, we talk I mean, in corporate IT, which are mainly people coming from the executives coming from the businesses. We talk the business language when we talk about the IT opportunities with them. So I think that sort of evolution has happened in other organizations. I see many examples now, and I think Partha Pasuli will substantiate that, that this shift in the uh, manning, I would say, of the IT department in the organization is really quite evident. Let's take a quick break, listeners. We'll be right back after these uh, messages and talk about the way uh, the Indian talent has evolved with respect to IT. We did uh, a lot of IT outsourcing, and we really were one of the major players, are, in fact, one of the major players in IT. Uh, and and uh, now what we did was all along, the type of quality assurance that we had to put in place was all for uh, mass production uh, of a lot of different projects happening and also that was for overseas clients so we were trying to uh, meet their expectations with respect to uh, how, when, what will be done and what security and what uh, quality that we will have to maintain. Indian, Indian enterprise IT, it's evolving. However, the scale at which it works is a little different. So the type of management talent that we are now trying to get would most probably be coming from one or the other out outsourcing outfit, and and this is a, this is an assumption, and you're more than welcome to challenge it. But then, if that's the case, how do they scale down their style and their their methodologies and everything else to meet the demand of enterprise IT, which is not as big yet? Yes, it is becoming bigger. So, how's the the existing workforce, IT workforce in India? being retrofitted into enterprise IT and how are they doing? Please stay tuned. We'll be right back and discuss. Money, money, up-to-date business and financial news. 
money. Call now and get the financial information you need. 866-472-5790. 866-472-5790. Voice America Business. Looking for flexible ways to scale your IT efforts? Then visit www.evolve.com today. Evolve helps companies find the global IT talent they need to align their IT and business objectives. Whether it's hiring top IT leadership talent or building a reliable technology team, Evolve delivers. To find out how Evolve can help your company, visit www.evolve.com or call 1-800-947-2832. Aval delivering global IT talent. That's www.aval, A V V A L, aval.com. Visit today. Now, Mrs. Johnson, before we close on your mortgage loan, I want to make sure you remember Mike. Hi, you can trust me. I'm African American, just like you. So, here's the low monthly payments and interest rates we promised, and here's where they triple. The rest of this stuff is just here to make sure that we get your house when you can't pay us back. What a lovely house. Predatory lenders are never this easy to spot. Call us at 866-222-FAIR and protect yourself with the facts. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Fair Housing Alliance and the Ad Council. There are so many challenges facing management today around the world. The New Management Network is here to provide practical insight and solutions for many of these challenges. Hosts Don and Bonnie Folk will explore topics designed to help you get the competitive upper hand, including organizational tools, personality and leadership, cutting-edge management tips, and much more. Join the New Management Network live every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Business Network. Internet's only all business and financial radio network, Voice America Business. You are listening to CIO Talk Radio. To learn more about the show, please visit www.ciotalkradio.com. If you have a question or comment, call toll free 1 866 472 5790. Now back to the show. Here's Sanjo Gall. Welcome back. So we are talking about uh, Indian talent that was uh, created because of the outsourcing boom and then different scale and different uh, level of expectation was there from the overseas clients for whom this, this talent was delivering. Now we may have a lot of engineers but fewer managers, and I'm, I'm sure a lot more managers are, are getting groomed as we speak, at the same time, the, the expectation that they had, the, the culture that they came from, and the assumption here is that most people who are being, you know, introduced into the enterprise IT today are coming from those outsourcing shops who were working in a different style and a different set of mandates. How is that retrofitting happening? Are you able to keep those guys challenged enough or be able to meet their demands so that they, able, they are able to meet your demands? Uh, Arvind. Um. I think um, the skills what enterprise IT is looking for and the skills which IT service providers uh, have, uh, they are slightly different. Of course, there is an overlap in certain areas, but um, I think the focus of the IT executives, the enterprise IT executives is on the business, and they need to have a, definitely a deep understanding of the business and the processes. Um, they need to sort of translate the technology language into the business language and get buy-in from the users because unless the IT is properly understood and supported by the business people, the implementation definitely won't be as successful. So, I mean, and as I just talked uh, earlier, the evolution of IT department and even the CIOs here is towards using business people to manage this function. I mean. I feel that IT is, is not a something which is a, a function sitting in an ivory tower, but it's in, entirely a business function. And if you understand that, the, all the necessary skills needed for the, uh, how say the current IT function would come from more from the businesses than from the technology firms. So in your view, would you kind of separate the geeks from the business guys and say, okay, all the business guys take care of the front-end role and get to understand what the user is saying and then become the bridge to those programmers or other people who are actually going to make that magic happen with their code 
and then hand it over to these individual like these individuals who are are basically working as bridges and then go back to the business and and do it so you don't bring the uh, the person who is at the lowest level in the chain of command to talk no, to because there is, yeah, it is totally outsourced. I mean, ha, all the hardcore technology part is being outsourced at least, I mean, Mahindra and Mahindra, let's say. And the people which we have, I mean, then, I mean, uh, the strategy part of it, the plans part of it, the understanding the uh, customer requirement, the both tacit and explicit, and uh, finding out the appropriate uh, business solution, aligning the business and the IT, all these functions are done at the core team, which are, I would say, that evolved IT function in the organization. Whereas the hardcore IT, whether it's uh, related to the uh, technology consultancy or in certain cases maybe the programmers, would definitely come from the service providers. I mean, there is also other point because I don't think uh, in the enterprise we won't be able to giving them the right career path, whereas the technology firms would certainly be able to give them. Very interesting, uh, Arvind, because, you know, when uh, I also visited India and also spoke to a number of CIOs, it seems like the model that is evolving in India is that you keep the business folks in-house who understand IT enough for them to be able to uh, meet the expectation of executive management and end business users, but then all the hardcore IT is being outsourced. But now, is that um, always cost-effective for any type of organization? Now, this is a question. Partha, what do you see here? Is that a trend? Actually, I, I think the, um, you know, it will be an interesting chicken and egg kind of discussion when it comes to India. Uh, I think over the past few years, uh, it's not so much the the desire for cost effectiveness that has driven the move to towards outsourcing, as Arvin was talking about, especially in in you know what I call uh, the the type A organizations and even the high end type B organizations. It was very clearly a recognition that with the with the growth of the offshore uh, IT industry from India, it was becoming quite difficult for even the blue chip companies like Mahindra and Mahindra and some of their peers to hold on to the numbers and quality of IT talent on the technical side. And it, it really became uh, almost impossible to, to uh, one, attract the best talent and then retain them. So part of this evolution of saying internal IT will focus more on the business side and the business liaison and, and really understanding what the business wants and the actual creation and delivery of the solutions will be through uh, outsourcing and uh, service providers is, is partly um, more kind of a necessity out of the, the realities of the Indian services market and the resource pool. And I think it's, uh, it, we're, we're kind of going through the second wave of outsourcing now where we've seen some mega deals, even mega even by global standards. You know, for example, the Bharati IBM deal was large even by global standards, where we're seeing the rise of outsourcing uh, uh, move to where uh, companies are trying to source the kinds of skills that they know they just can't get in-house or even be able to afford to bring them in-house, and hence they're looking for uh, to the outsourcers to, to bring those skills and bring that capability to bear on the significant business challenges that they're facing. And again, internal IT plays that critical bridge role to, to be the bridge that understands what the business needs and then in this case interact with the outsourcing provider. So I think that's where the transition is in, in at least the type A and type B uh, Indian enterprises. Now, would you think that this model that has already evolved and that is out of necessity, is that truly the model which is sustainable, and is that the model which will allow enterprise ID to reach a true potential going forward because it could become cost prohibitive as well? Arthur? Yeah, I, I, I don't think it will, it will necessarily become cost prohibitive. Uh, you know, the trends don't indicate that that might happen. Um, where, where I think this will continue to make sense is we're actually seeing that the same trend is, is playing out uh, in, in most uh, most parts of the world, the, the difference in India is that, again, it's happening in a relatively accelerated time frame. So in, in India, strangely enough, the challenge is, is really the reverse. 
uh, you know, it, it's it's funny that, uh, or, or actually, if, if it if it wasn't so serious, it would be funny uh, that you know, even though India is kind of seen as the outsourcing uh, capital for the world, most Indian CIOs actually struggle to get uh, the service providers to pay enough attention to them, and it's only recently now that. I think service providers, at least the Indian service providers, have woken up to the fact that uh, the, the Indian outsourcing, the domestic outsourcing industry can actually be a compelling value proposition. Uh, and uh, they recognize, though, that to play in that market, they, you know, it, it, they have to be fairly competitive. And, uh, and that's what I think will keep it uh, price, price competitive and, and not really make it price prohibitive, as, as, uh, as you indicated. Looking at the budgets, um, given the downturn, the topic was all about, you know, while we are not in the greatest of the, the scenarios right now where we saw the economic meltdown and there's a ripple effect or, in fact, some cases, direct effect on the way uh, Indian enterprises handling their budgets overall, including IT. So if you were to prioritize the projects, which ones which you, would you bring to the table first? Because, you know, frankly, you have almost a blank sheet of paper on which you've started drawing just literally two days ago, and now you're told you've got to tighten up your budgets. How on earth does someone prioritize when you don't have all, all the things marked down on that piece of paper yet? So, Arvind, what do you think? Uh, there is no question that we need to prioritize, and uh, the prioritize, of course, will be driven by the business need anyway. But if you really uh, look at the IT investment which uh, an enterprise does, I mean, there are certain portions which go to uh, maintaining the operations, maybe in the current scenario, 24 by 7, and there are certain sort of support uh, functions. And um, uh, then there are strategic projects which basically relate to the um, business strategy, whether maybe related to the growth or creating the specific competitive advantage for that. And the last portion which we talked about, I mean, which we classify as, we call it as a high potential, they are basically the uh, investment which we do mostly in terms of emerging technologies, which we see the potential opportunities within the business to deploy those and derive benefits. And there may be a sort of a small investment uh, to start with, but it's like a real option, possibly leveraging it on a future date. Now, the type of investment in supports and the operations part of it, they will have to be there because you need to maintain the operations. But what generally will happen now is that uh, most of the IT functions, including, I mean, what we do is, will now look inward in terms of how we are optimizing these uh, uh, internal processes, uh, the various those cost reduction initiatives which we talked about. I mean, they will be most critically we looked into that so that we are... Uh, delivering more for the less part of it. The strategic projects, of course, have to be aligned with the business. And if the business has a different priorities, I don't think IT can have a different priorities altogether. So those priorities will be determined by the businesses. But I feel the, the projects which fall into that high potential category may possibly get affected. I mean, it depends on how a, a particular organization sees the potential to deploy that technology maybe in a one year or two years and what benefits they accrue. But I suspect possibly the, uh, uh, the project in this category may possibly get deferred. Okay. So, Partha, oh. um, if you look at the budgets today and the way people are allocating budgets today compared to what you saw, like, say, beginning of 2008 when we did not see the meltdown as yet, how do you see the change in mindset? happening in the enterprise IT leaders in India? Um, at this point in time, we're, we're seeing some level of caution. So, so our last survey indicated, you know, this was before the, the meltdown, uh, the average uh, IT budget increases that we saw in 2008 were off the order of about 16% or so compared to a global average of 4%. And pre-meltdown uh, for 2009, uh, though they were still kind of a quarter away from from uh, those those numbers starting to uh, to kind of take shape, uh, the initial indicators were that the the budget increases would be of that same magnitude. 
After the meltdown, uh, again, you know, very preliminary indicators, uh, we will still see uh, budget increases. Uh, we're not going to see uh, a leveling of budgets or, or cutting back of budgets. We still uh, expect to see some, some level of budget growth. Uh, what that number is, whether it ends up being kind of a 5 to 7% growth, uh, or even in some cases maybe still up in the double digits of about 10%, is it's still out there, but I think it will still be healthy by global standards. I think Indian enterprises recognize, as Arvind was saying, uh, that, that it is key to continue investing, and the kind of panic we have seen in other parts of the world, uh, yes, some of that, that panic has, has come in in the sense of more of caution, but I'd say that the same scale of panic has not hit Indian enterprises, at least to the extent that we've seen it. And one of the factors that I think goes into that is uh, which which is a strong correlation with uh, with uh, the actual uh, kind of economic environment here is is how exposed uh, the the country is to to the export export market in general and to the u s market in particular and India compared to some of the other countries in asia pac is is really not that exposed to the uh, the export market uh, you know the time magazine had a had a study recently. I think they pegged India's uh, exposure to exports as a percentage of GDP at roughly about 17% or so uh, compared to, uh, you know, 28% for China and, and some of the other countries were even higher. So I think that's a mitigating factor in that domestic demand is still a strong driver for most Indian enterprises, and that's what will keep, I think, IT investments uh, at, a, at a relatively high level compared to global numbers. Let's take a quick break, listeners. We'll be right back after these messages and talk about the way a CIO or an IT leader uh, is perceived today in an Indian enterprise environment uh, among the business unit leaders, the different entities that are surrounding you. That is the business user, business unit leaders, executive management, customers, partners. Now, if IT has to really become the driver which delivers value and which delivers uh, the competitive edge, how much of trust and how much of empowerment has been provided to this enterprise IT leader who's working 25 hours out of 24 hour day to make things happen? And if that has not come to that yet, what are the reasons? Why is that lack of trust existing? Please stay tuned. We'll be right back and discuss. Sell, buy, buy, sell. All we talk about is money. Talk to an expert. Call now. Now, Call free 866-472-5790. 866-472-5790. Voice America Business. Have you found yourself overwhelmed or stalled, not getting the goals you dream of? Hear what the experts say about how you can break through solutions, systems, skills. Get your strategy on track and accelerate your business success. Join Linda Feinholz every Monday for The Spark Effect. Linda and her guests will show you and your team exactly how to grow your business further, faster, easier. The Spark Effect is heard every Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Business Network. Looking for flexible ways to scale your IT efforts? Then visit www.aval.com today. Aval helps companies find the global IT talent they need to align their IT and business objectives. Whether it's hiring top IT leadership talent or building a reliable technology team, Aval delivers. To find out how Aval can help your company, visit www.aval.com or call 1-800-947-2832. Aval, delivering global IT talent. That's www.aval, A-V-V-A-L, aval.com. Visit today. From the stock market floor to your laptop, we are Voice America Business. You are listening to CIO Talk Radio. To learn more about the show, please visit www.ciotalkradio.com. If you have a question or comment, call toll-free 1-866-472-5790. Now back to the show, here's Sanjo Gall. Welcome back. So we are expecting uh, the CIO or the IT leader in, a, in an organization in India uh, to deliver miracles 
and, of course, take the company to the next level, deliver value, provide competitive advantage. How much of support and trust and empowerment has been provided by the executive leadership on an average when you look across the spectrum? And if it is happening more often than not, good news, amazing. But we have not seen that happen usually in other parts of the world where the IT is also mature. So if that is not happening, why not, and what would it take for everybody to come and join the same bandwagon so IT can help drive the economy, help drive the value and competitive advantage? Arvind, what do you think? Um, I think it really depends on the organization. I mean, how the CEO and CFO really look at IT, whether they see that as a competitive weapon or otherwise. And um, luckily, based on my experience in Mahindra and Mahindra, I would say that I'm a bit lucky um, because um, uh, my, my top management understands the importance or the and uh, uh, competency which IT would provide the organizations on the long term. So that's why I mean, as a CIO, I take part in the business units uh, study discussion as a part of the corporate center. My IT strategy gets debated at the top management and by the business heads and then gets formulated. Uh, so the alignment part of it between IT and business happens that way. And I think that entirely depends on the, the trust which uh, uh, the business unit heads uh, really uh, have in, I won't say the individual capacity, but as a function, IT function within that. And I've seen, I mean, once you uh, agree to your goals, then how you achieve that is left to the CIO. I mean, there is no micromanagement per se, but of course there are student governance uh, happening there. And uh, so, for example, I mean, um, uh, in the case of Mahindra Mahindra, I would say we are into uh, sort of one mega project, uh, which basically talks about um, harmonizing all the, I mean, we have selected four processes, business process across all the group companies, and putting it on a common platform, that is SAP. And it's a multi-crew project, and it's going in for about two years' uh, duration. But that has been, uh, happened, initiated by the uh, the IT function, because uh, that strategy, we suggested this is could be the way one we should go about. These are the benefits as a group possibly we could have got. And that it is happening. So I think it's a question of, uh, of course, I mean, you need to earn that trust anyway. But uh, if the major top management uh, understand that, I don't see any issue in terms of uh, uh, getting the funding if you, are, if you need to go into the specifics for your projects per se. And see, beyond the funding, it is also empowerment so that, and also the fact that uh, the trust also percolates across the organization because Absolutely. if the top guy loves you, then that love gets, you know, spread across the organization. It's at least a hope and pray that that it, that it happens, and that makes your job easier. Because if you could have a multi crore project, yeah. and if it falls flat right. on its face because it doesn't get adopted, because you did not have buy-in from the business users, yeah. it doesn't help anyone. Yeah. So, so okay. what what you said, you are being modest by saying that you are lucky, but you should have done something, which other enterprise CIOs can learn from. Is that what you did? was you try to create the process of the decision-making such that you do not own the decision, the business does from the get-go, and, and then see. the adoption is a non-issue. But is that what you planned for? Was this a planned exercise, or is this something it's, you know, uh, I think and I'm not sure really, that's what it was the case. But what do you think? It really, really depends on the, your background. I mean, because I could speak to the business language, and I could understand what the business needs, I mean, uh, uh, we talked about the evolvement of the both IT function as well as the CIO. The skills and competency required of the CIO are also getting changed. I mean, we are basically talking about, uh, we are basically, I mean, in reality talking about our internal customers, our value proposition, our partners, our core competencies. I mean, we think in those terms. So obviously, one need to be aligned to the business thinking in any case. Partha, and if I look at what uh, I think that, uh, Sanjog, in terms of in terms of the uh, you know the, the skills of the CIO that that Arvin mentioned and the overall evolution we are talking about, I think India, similar to other parts of the world, 
has its fair share of, of environments where in some of the environments the, the CIOs are ahead of the, 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 the business management in terms of what they think IT can deliver to the business and what it should be delivering and its role within the, within, within the enterprise. But if they have not uh, either uh, for, for lack of, of trying or, or because of you know, historical reasons or whatever, they don't have the credibility and the trust of the business management to take them along, it often tends to be where IT is ahead of the business and that tends to be a mismatch which usually results in the CIO uh, becoming frustrated and, and leaving the organization. Um, the other kind of uh, extreme is where the business is extremely IT hungry, if you will, and want IT to do more for the business, but the CIO is fairly comfortable in their technical domain and don't really want to step into the business domain. And that, again, I think is, is, uh, is a situation where we're seeing more and more Indian enterprises actually starting to move business people into the CIO role, uh, kind of reaching a level of frustration with, with the technical CIO that they don't understand the business. And then the third category is, I think, the, the nirvana category, which, which I think Arvind is, is fortunate enough to be in, where there's, there's actually a fairly strong meeting of the minds between the CIO and business management, and they're fairly aligned both in their thinking as well as, you know, how the business perceives IT and the CIO. And those are actually, you know, like in other parts of the world, the most effective organizations. So I think India is going to the transition right now. Now, given the tight purse strings that we have today because of, you know, overall, um, you know, crunch that we are seeing, the R&D cell, which is also very important for us to think ahead and, and take a quantum leap over and over again so that when uh, you have this next new thing that you come up with, it takes you three or four years ahead of your competitors. That R&D cell is so much more important, and it also requires things like green IT that, uh, you know, the whole world is talking about to do some corporate social responsibility and also save costs. So when you talk about such philanthropic efforts and or the R&D efforts, are they being stifled or they, we, have a, we have put a stop to them just because we do not have, uh, we, have the, we are in that keeping the lights on mode? Arvind, is that what is happening today? Um. No, I think Partha um, described it quite aptly there. I mean, the effect of this downturn is not uh, been as severe, so to say, on the... I mean, we are definitely being cautioned, uh, but uh, certainly not uh, getting panicky in terms of, uh, you know, cutting on uh, uh, the cost uh, wherever, I mean, uh, as much as possible. Uh, the caution is certainly there, and as I said earlier, I mean, the, I mean, we are also getting affected. Basically, our major business is vehicle manufacturing, automobile, and uh, uh, most of the business depends on the the vehicle financing being done. So it got really affected. But I think, um, um, and as Partha mentioned, I mean, we should be coming out of that situation um, much faster than possibly the rest of the world. So, I mean, uh, we have, I mean, the thing is that, I mean, you can't uh, uh, say that I have planned for the next six months, I will follow this. In this situation, possibly we may need to monitor the situation um, as we go along. I mean, uh, you may talk about the, the long-term strategy, but I think the monitoring has to be done maybe uh, uh, every uh, week or every month. I mean, we may need to be flexible enough to sort of change our priorities if it needs to be. So, I think that's what... We, the CIOs would be adopting mostly in India. All right, let's take a quick break, listeners. Uh, we'll be right back. And Partha, I would like to extend this topic. Then let's leave the economic downturn. But the very fact that the maturity of an enterprise IT is when you are not only looking at what you have to do to keep the lights on, but you also have to have that R&D cell. That, that is when you've taken care of your core work and then you are looking at that self-actualization level, what we do when as, as individuals. We want to reach our maximum potential. So is the enterprise IT there yet where it is trying to maximize its true potential by looking into having a, a separate R&D cell where there's some, some research and, and development and other types of activities, some innovation that's happening. And we are also looking at how we innovatively use green IT or other initiatives to also be socially responsible. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back and let's uh, hear from Parth. Sell 
Buy, buy, sell. All we talk about is money. Talk to an expert. Call now. Call now. Toll free 866-472-5790. 866-472-5790. Voice America Business. Mom? Dad? How long should I wait for you? Mom? If I'm at soccer practice. What if something happens? Will you come get me? Should I stay where I am and wait for you? Or go to Grandma's house? So it gets closer. Should we pick a place for me? There's no reason not to have a plan in case of a terrorist attack. Mom, if you're not home, should we go to the neighbor's house? How do we keep in touch with each other if the phones don't work? Should I be worried how we all get home? And some extremely good reasons why you should. Can you tell me? Everybody should have a plan. Take five minutes to talk about where you'll meet and how you'll get in touch with each other in an emergency. For other things you can do to be prepared, visit www.ready.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Ad Council. for flexible ways to scale your IT efforts? Then visit www.aval.com today. Aval helps companies find the global IT talent they need to align their IT and business objectives. Whether it's hiring top IT leadership talent or building a reliable technology team, Aval delivers. To find out how Aval can help your company, visit www.aval.com or call 1-800-947-2832. Aval, delivering global IT talent. That's www.aval, A-V-V-A-L, aval.com. Visit today. The bottom line in business, Voice America Business. You are listening to CIO Talk Radio. To learn more about the show, please visit www.ciotalkradio.com. If you have a question or comment, call toll-free 1-866-472-5790. Now back to the show, here's Sanjo Gall. Welcome back. So, Partha, the question is, uh, in that uh, overall, um, you know, keeping your lights on and everything else is happening, but from a maturity standpoint, is the enterprise IT in India there yet where they can look beyond having their core uh, offering available to the enterprise and everything is going hunky-dory and then let's look at that, uh, you know, maximizing your potential or the business's potential by putting in, setting up an R&D lab and, and doing other things with respect to corporate social responsibility. Has that, you know, maturity come in as yet? I would say, um, you know, kind of an, uh, another way to, to look at that evolution from, from a Gartner perspective would be to talk about uh, uh, utility or, or efficiency-related IT, enhancement-related IT, and then transformational IT. Uh, the efficiency is really where IT is more a cost-cutting tool. Uh, enhancement is where it's, it's uh, improving productivity, and transformation is really where uh, that's what you're talking about, which is where it, it's getting into R&D, it's getting into into new areas like corporate social responsibility, whether that's green IT or, or other such uh, initiatives. Um, in India, my my kind of rough take is that uh, we, we probably see only about 10% of Indian enterprises have reached that point of really looking at IT for, transform- for transformational impact. And that co- kind of loosely correlates with, with those type A enterprises I was talking about who believe that IT can actually help them drive future business evolution. But at this point, I would say it, it's very early days from an Indian perspective, and it's only those kind of, uh, you know, bleeding edge 10% of the, the Indian IT enterprises that are at that point. With some of the other enterprises, maybe the next kind of uh, 20% or so, the intent might be there from a business perspective, but one of the challenges they face is that just given the, the you know, large number of years of underinvestment in IT, it, it's very hard to just turn on a dime and say, okay, from tomorrow we're going to expect innovation from IT. There's actually a tremendous amount of foundational work that has to go in place, that has to be put in place before the, the IT department can even start thinking about helping the business drive innovation, and that next 20% of the enterprises are actually in this feverish build-out phase, whether that's building out their infrastructure or building out their application suites 
or building out their, even in some cases, the, the networking and telecom infrastructure, till they get those pieces in place, it, it's actually almost impossible to look at delivering uh, innovation and R&D to the business. Now, with respect to uh, security, now this is one thing. As soon as we talk about any any country which is been in outsourcing, but at the same time, we the, the perception maybe, or that that could just be a myth, is that security has been always a big challenge or a big red flag whenever somebody outsourced things to India or China or any other place. Now, now the buck stops for I mean the the stakes are high for our own enterprises. How is security handled today, or has that has that improved? the security management in an enterprise with respect to IT, you know, becoming the very backbone, a lot of data is flowing electronically, and with so many people, you know, getting hired and or getting laid off or walking away to another company. What is the state of security today, and has, is it getting better? Or if not, then what has to be done to make it better? Arvin. Uh, actually, we got our BS 7 son and then certification three years back. And it was not only for IT, but it was for the organization. And currently we are on a ISO 27001. So we have all the things necessary to <laughs> put the certification on. So we have all the IT uh, information security policies and processes in place. And of course that audit is being done uh, every year by the STQC. Uh, so I would say there is a quite a well uh, preparedness, I would say. Uh, from uh, IT side and from the organization side in terms of uh, uh, the risks involved in uh, IT vulnerabilities, so to say. I mean, there is a defined structure uh, within the organization. We have a FX Council, which uh, includes the presidents, the business functions, as well as myself. And then there are... Um, ISR, that information security representative for each business sectors, and down to the level of uh, locational uh, council and the departmental heads. So I would say to some extent definitely we are uh, being prepared for uh, information security. And both, uh, and obviously, of course, the, all the techn technological uh, tools, of course, are in place. So I would say... Uh, and I think in, in general also, um, the awareness of information security is there in many organizations. So this year, I think, in, uh, again, I mean, it may not be, uh, definitely in the recent past, uh, that trend has shown some uh, quite a perceptible increase. All right, Partha, very uh, quick. And I think, uh, if I can just add a quick point to that, uh, Sanjog, um, I think security especially in the context of a country like India, um, there's, there's uh, as much of a factor that rests outside the enterprise and, and what's outside the enterprise's control when it comes to security and IP protection. For example, even cultural attitudes towards security in a place like India are very different from what you might see in some of the Western countries. Uh, the legal framework uh, that that uh, is in place in other countries, whether that's legal framework to protect patents and IP or uh, privacy of data is, is missing uh, as yet or doesn't have the same level of enforcement, uh, even if some of the laws do exist in, in India. And then, you know, if you look at this notion of a key employee walks out of your, uh, of your uh, organization and decides to join a competitor, uh, we, uh, we've seen through multiple court cases in India that, that the court always favors the individual employee, which means that a lot of the non-compete clauses that are pretty much ironclad in, in places like the U.S. are often not worth the paper they're written on in India. So enterprises actually have very little recourse in general to prevent key employees from joining a competitor and taking what's in their heads with them. And, you know, the three-year uh, kind of bar of joining a competitor is very hard to enforce in India, so the whole notion of security in that broader context is, is quite challenging as yet in India, and it's still a work in progress. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. 
Now, uh, on behalf of the show and our listeners, I'd really like to thank you, uh, Parth and Irvin, for sharing your thoughts about how the Indian CIO, while there may be a uh, you know, roller coaster ride, and maybe from the outside it looks like everybody is facing it, good news is it seems that enterprise IT is not facing it that much, and it's well on its way to become a very mature IT organization, and or you know, you're enabling organization to, uh, organizations to use IT and get more competitive and um, you know, uh, you know, reach to the next level of potential. Thanks a lot, Sanjay. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sanjay. Thanks, Parth. Thank pleasure. you so much. Now, um, we would love to hear any comments that you may have about Enterprise IT because uh, the companies may be opening offices there and or the companies in India who are facing some challenges with respect to how do they take IT to the next level. We saw Arvind, you know, worked his way uh, into making IT successful at Mahindra and Mahindra and Partha shared, of course, what the, the world is doing in uh, India uh, with respect to using Enterprise IT. Please share your thoughts uh, at views at ciotalkradio.com. That is views at ciotalkradio.com. This is Sancho Hall, uh, your host at CIO Talk Radio. Till next week, uh, take care and God bless. Thank you for tuning in to CIO Talk Radio. To learn more about the show, please visit www.ciotalkradio.com. Join Sanjal Gaul next Wednesday at 9 a.m. Central, 7 a.m. Pacific for another hour of CIO Talk Radio.